You're listening to Atlanta Baseball Talk, your weekly podcast for all things Atlanta Braves. Welcome to the show. Today is Tuesday, February 18th, 2014, and my name is Steve. No hammy tonight, but I am joined by Kurt. Curtis, how are you? Lego movie. God, it was so good. So entertaining. <laughs> it really was. I, I, My hopes were kind of high because of the um, previews, because the previews looked pretty funny. And it so exceeded that. It really was clever and kind of um, social commentary to it. And it looked f- great. Weird and, just, and, yeah. Yeah, weird and strange. Absolutely. And not to ruin it for anyone, but there is a Star Wars gag in that movie that is just absolutely inspired. You know what I'm talking about? I do. Yeah, and I mean, they, it's they, just brilliant. It was just brilliant. And not that he's got a lot of work, but that they pulled Billy D. Williams out to voice Lando Calrissian is pretty awesome. Yeah, and it was and it was the C-3PO guy. Oh, that well, is true. But it was not Harrison Ford. It Lame. Yeah, it was lame. I agree. <laughs> uh, all right, before we get started... Please make sure, everyone, you subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or Stitcher. And to keep up with everything going on with the show and the website, follow us on Twitter at ATL Baseball Talk and on Facebook. All right, Kurt, tonight we are very happy to be joined by an eight-time All-Star, two-time Silver Slugger, NL batting champion and MVP, and of course a World Series champion, Chipper Jones. Chipper, thanks for joining us. How are you tonight? Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm doing well. Great. So, so Chipper, we, we want to, you know, talk about the past and the present, a little of the future, too. So starting with your 18 years with the Braves, obviously a lot of chapters, a lot of different things went on during those 18 years. But given the World Series victory, was 1995 your favorite year as a Brave? Oh, I don't think there's any doubt. I think uh, when, you were, when you were in it as long as I was, you know, your first years – no matter whether it was a World Series championship or not, obviously that was the icing on the cake. But uh, you know, your first year is always very special, and you know, for me, my last year was was awfully special. Being able to uh, spend that year with my teammates and have such such great fun, and uh, be able to uh, travel around the, the National League East and and various uh, American League cities, and be able to. Uh, you know, experience all the gratitude that I got from those people. It was uh, it was just a a really fun year, uh, but certainly every year that we, uh, um, you know, uh, get ready to to start a season, uh, our goal is to uh, give ourselves an opportunity to win a National League championship and and play for a World Series. So. Uh, you know, those were our goals here in Atlanta, and more times than not, we gave ourselves an opportunity uh, to get there. Uh, didn't always end up end up right, but uh, we got one, and that's uh, one more than a lot of the teams got. Well, and in talking about that, Smoltz in his book uh, from a year or two back, he talked about all the postseasons and in, in the one title, and he uh, gave a great explanation of each series loss. You know, talked about kind of refuting a lot of the the team was only built for the regular season, all that kind of stuff. Um, do you kind of share those sentiments that, uh, you know, I mean, it is what it is and, and that you got the one ring that you have, or do you think that you guys should have won a couple more? I mean, even beyond 96, 98, I mean, there were some other great teams that you guys had. Yeah, 96 was uh, really the only year that kind of sticks out to me. Um, that was the year that... Uh, uh, we went into New York and uh, won the first two games pretty handily, and and then came back home uh, thinking that we were going to get it done in relatively short fashion, and um, you know ended up losing three straight, ended up losing four straight. Uh, to be honest with you, obviously, uh, uh, Laris's home run was kind of a you know a, a swing swing uh, in the series, you know, and and. Uh, uh, we felt like we had game four in, in, in the basket and certainly felt good about going into game five with one of the uh, best big game pitchers in, in the history of baseball uh, going for us in John Smoltz. That was really the only year that kind of uh, gets up under my saddle. I feel like every other year that uh, that we were uh, 
uh, in the playoffs at that particular time, we got beat by a better team. Uh, I really felt like we had the best team in baseball in 96, and we just didn't get it done every other year. You know, we just ran into a couple of hot pitchers and a hot team in October, and, and that was the end of us. Well, and, and let's talk about uh, you moving out to left field. Um, you, you play out there for two years. Looking back, is, I mean, you're obviously the consummate teammate, but it, do you regret that move? Is that a move you think you would make again in hindsight? Uh, yeah, I would make it. I was always willing to do what was uh, best for the team. And, you know, that, that move, uh, getting Vinny Castilla uh, in here at third base, uh, me moving, I uh, certainly felt like I could play uh, anywhere on the diamond, and I uh, wanted to uh, make sure that, that we had the best offensive team possible. We were able to get um, uh, Vinny for relatively cheap, and, um, you know, I, w- I would have made the same move again. It's just It was something that I felt was the right thing to do at, at, at that time, and uh, for whatever reason, um, uh, you know, we we weren't able to get it done that year, but I felt like that gave us the best chance to win. And uh, I was not going to be selfish and say, um, you know, I'm I'm a third baseman. I can't play anywhere else. Um, I think that would uh, be the selfish way to approach things. I, I had a great time playing out there. I got to play in one of the best outfields, you know, in baseball with uh, Andrew Jones at center and Gary Sheffield and right. So that was you know, kind of a fun trio to be a part of. So I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. So, Chippers, staying with that time around that move to left field, as you said, it was a very unselfish move. I can't think of many other ball players who were so entrenched in their positions who would do that. And yet, around that time and a little bit after, there was like some anti-Chipper sentiment about get folks getting on you about errors or not being a vocal leader, this stuff. Did you think that was unfair? Did you hear that stuff? How did you handle that? <laughs> I'm a professional athlete. I get criticized all the time, whether I like it or not, whether I do good <laughs> things or not. You know, you're never going to please everybody, uh, no matter what you do. Uh, to be honest with you, the people that are inside that clubhouse and and around the team every day, they'll tell you differently. Uh, you know, whoever was was saying that. You know, it, it, it goes in one ear and out the other, to be honest with you. I can't control what comes out of people's mouths. I can't control, uh, you know, other people's perception. I did uh, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, a monthly and a yearly basis, what, what I thought was best uh, for the Atlanta Braves to be successful, and, and that's that's all I was really focused on. When you were playing, Chipper, did you stay away from talk radio and the papers, or did you check all that stuff out too? Uh, I guess at times I did. I like to keep my, uh, uh, at least finger on the pulse of what was going on, but I, I had to take it with a grain of salt. You know that when you play professional sports and especially, you know, everything that goes on down here in Atlanta, uh, it, it was, you, like I said, you got to take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd be lying if I said I didn't listen to it. But, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't really, I, I, to be honest with you, it was, it was more entertaining <laughs> than anything else to listen to, to some people's perception of not only, you know, myself, but uh, the organization as well. Well, let's let's move on to the current team. So, obviously, uh, the first big off-season news is uh, the Braves moving to Cobb County. So, what's your thought on that? Do you think that's a good move for the fans, for the city? you have any feedback on that? Um, I, it, I was a little surprised, obviously, only being in a stadium for 20 years is uh, a bit unprecedented. Um, you know, the, the Braves being down at the Ted uh, starting in 1997, only 20 years, that's, uh, that's not a very long time. But I think the Braves probably were promised some things by the, by the city uh, down there around uh, the Ted, thinking that, uh, you know, the, the community was going to be built up, that they were going to, they were promised certain things, and I think the Braves, uh, weren't real happy with with what they got out of the agreement. Uh, with this current agreement, uh, with the Braves moving to Cobb County, they're going to have more control over 
sales and stuff from around the ballpark. It's going to be a place that you can take the family, you know, for an entire day, you know, with obviously the baseball game at night being kind of the, the icing on the cake. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's going to be more of more of something I think you you see in Denver, Colorado, around Coors Field. You got all the bars and the restaurants and just a lot of activity that uh, you can go take the family down there and spend the day and uh, and have a good time. And I think that's kind of what the Braves were in, were envisioning downtown. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out, and uh, now they're probably going to have to, well, they're definitely going to have to move to Cobb County in order to um, uh, get what they want. So, Chipper, looking back at last year's playoff loss, you know, a lot of the, the talk afterward was the Braves need an ace. They're not going to get far in the playoffs. But given the experience that all the pitchers who are coming back got in the playoffs last year, along with the addition of Gavin Floyd, do you think that the, you know, 2014 starting rotation is built to win in the playoffs? Uh, I would like to see uh, the Braves you know, go out and get that power arm. Uh, it's been my experience over um, you know, my time in, in professional baseball that uh, power arms, power pitching is what wins in the postseason, and uh, they were going up against some some pretty good power pitching there in the uh, Los Angeles Dodgers, and I thought that would be the difference in the series. They had Kershaw on the ropes there, and in Game Four, and very well could have gotten it to a Game Five, and, and who knows what happens in a Game Five. But ultimately, you know, uh, you you. In my experience, you run up against a, uh, a Diamondbacks team with a Randy Johnson and a Kurt Schilling. You run up against a Cubs team with Kerry Wood and and Mark Pryor. You run up against a, a uh, Houston Astro team with a, a Roger Clemens and a Royals Walt. Uh, you know, the, those are the the type of pitchers that you need in the postseason. Not to say that uh, any uh, any of the guys in the Braves rotation won't develop into those guys. I just don't know if uh, the Braves have enough swing and miss ability come playoff time to be able to get the job done. They have five very good starters that will keep them in ball games. I have no doubt. Uh, we'll just, you know, I think it's, uh, it's really going to boil down to can – can Dan Uglin and B.J. Upton have bounce-back seasons this year and, and really make up for the losses of a Brian McCann and a Tim Hudson uh, throughout a 162-game schedule just to get them to the playoffs. Uh, you know, Obviously, once you get to the playoffs, it's a coin flip, and, and if you get hot at the right time, uh, you can reel off some wins. Well, Chipper, I'm sure you saw a lot of those at-bats last year, too, from uh, B.J. and Dan Ugla. Do you see anything? Do you have any reason to think that they'll have better years this year? Uh, well, I, I think uh, in, in Dan's case, maybe a, a change in philosophy might help him. I, I really saw in him what I saw from Andrew Jones the last couple of years that he was in Atlanta where they were really pull conscious, trying to hook the ball around the left field foul pole. and. These guys are so big and strong. They can hit the ball from foul pole to foul pole. I see them do it every day in batting practice. Uh, they can go foul pole to foul pole uh, out of the park and, and just choose not to do so come game time. And um, For whatever reason, uh, I, I don't know, but I think it's just a change in mentality for Dan. I, I got the impression so many times last year watching BJ uh, hit that I, I just didn't know if he was seeing the ball real well and um he just looked like uh you know a couple times he was swinging when the ball was in the mitt and that happens when you're just not seeing the ball real well so i don't know if he was having some some eye issues or what but uh hopefully you know they've gotten it corrected over the off season um uh, they the Atlanta Braves have two very good hitting coaches in Greg Walker and Scott Fletcher and and uh, have the utmost uh, confidence that he'll get those guys will get Dan and BJ, you know, back to where they need to be. Were you uh, surprised at all at, at uh, kind of this rash of contract at contract extensions that they've been handing out to these young guys, given kind of the limitations that the Braves have had on their payroll over the past few years? Well, certainly, uh, uh, you know, getting uh, Brian McCann and, and, 
Tim Hudson and a couple other guys off the payroll have allowed them to be able to uh, go out and sign some of these young guys at a somewhat rebated price, I guess you could say. I know uh, Freddie Freeman had the huge contract extension, but being able to go out and lock down um, you know, a, a good young power arm in Julio Tehran and obviously uh, one of the best, if not the best, uh, closer in the game in Craig Kimbrell. These are the cornerstones by which you, you build for the future. And I, I think uh, the Braves did it with me after my rookie season. Any rookie that uh, or any young player that has shown promise that has the game that can last for 10, 12, 15 years um, to the Braves. The Braves have tried to go out and sign at an early age, take them out of arbitration, even try and get a couple free agent years if you can, uh, as they did with with uh, uh, Freddie Freeman. Uh, you know, it, it sets people's mind at ease that you have, hey, I got who I think is going to be our number one starter, over the next four or five years, I have the best closer in the game, and I'm locking him up for the next four years, and I've got our number three hitter for the next eight years completely locked up. Those are the cornerstones by which you build around, and I think the Braves have done a tremendous job in, in getting those guys locked up. All right, Chipper, let's finish up with this. So during your final year, some of the interviews you gave, you spoke about both broadcasting and coaching potentially being in your future after you leave baseball. So any clearer idea now? A little, a little farther removed about what you're going to do in the coming years with baseball. Uh, no, it's still a pretty gray area, to be honest with you. I have no desire to get back in uniform anytime soon. Uh, I'm having so much fun uh, being retired and kind of uh, living my life as I please, and being able to come and go as I please. Um, as you know, the the major league lifestyle is is a tough and, and rugged one from a travel standpoint. I'm just not ready to, to get back into that yet. I would be open to some uh, broadcasting opportunities, um, but it would have to be, again, you know, on my schedule and and w- kind of when I want to do that. And there aren't too many people out there that are willing to, to, to do that. So uh, I, I'm okay with with uh, life right now. I'm uh, getting a chance to spend a lot of time with my uh, with my four boys. I'm playing a lot of uh, sometimes awful golf, and uh, <laughs> you know, just uh, living the retired life. I'm uh, moving full time out to South Texas. Uh, I have a ranch out in South Texas here in the next couple months, and uh, thoroughly uh, kind of focused on that. So I got you know, I'm not. I'm, not just a baseball player. The the baseball part of my life did not, you know, rule my life, and I, it, it won't uh, continue to rule my life. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and and have fun and do the things that I enjoy doing away from the game. All right, so you're not gonna be the hitting coach in 2015. <laughs> then, I'm, I'm guessing. No, like I said, those guys, you know, the base I have a very good. Uh, two very good hitting instructors, and I think they're they're pretty happy with them. And I certainly think that if uh, if Walk and, and Fletch can can somehow, some way get uh, Ugly and BJ back in the swing of things, I think they may have a job there for a very, very long time. Yeah, you get a lifetime contract, you turn those guys <laughs> around, I think. All right, hey, hey, Chipper, thank you so much. It was really a pleasure to talk to you. We appreciate it. Uh, good luck with the move out to Texas and the next few years, but we hope to see you back uh, in uniform at some point with the Braves. I appreciate it. It was a pleasure talking to you. All right, thank you. So, Kurt, all right, so... um. You know, I expected with Chipper on the question about will the um, starting pitching be, you know, in better shape for this year, I expected a more politic answer than we got. He (laughs) he does think we need that number one flamethrower. And uh, yeah, he didn't sound so confident about the um, this pitching staff in the postseason. Yeah. and, And, you know, obviously as every Braves fan is aware, listed off a series of names of guys who uh, the Braves, frankly, couldn't beat in the postseason. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, it remains to be seen what, what happens with these guys. I mean, you, you, you have high hope that uh, they can all develop and that they have experience and all this kind of stuff that we keep throwing out there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, of course, I agree with him. So, And I don't, I'm not sure I've been 
very quiet about my agreement with that assessment. So, And the other thing I thought that was pretty interesting was his assessment of BJ and that, like, there's vision problems because that was one thing I never really thought of last year yeah. nor had I, I heard about. And that's, you know, but I certainly take his, um, you know, his hitting analysis to heart for sure. And uh, that's interesting. You know, maybe the wrong guy got LASIK last year. Right. Yeah, exactly. Maybe we can remove Ugla's eyes and put him in BJ's body. And wouldn't it be great if we really do see a different hitting approach from Dan, like Chipper described? Because I agree. Uh, you know, something's got to, something's really got to change. Something fundamental's got to change with Dan. The one thing I, I didn't get to, I, I regret not asking was, you know, what does Chipper think about the fact that Ugla just seems absolutely fooled by anything down in a way where he just flails at it. Well, and that also obviously goes with him trying to pull everything is that he can't reach those outside pitches because he's, he's yanking every, trying to yank everything to left field. And, and you have no chance if you're trying to pull everything to get a pitch that's down and away. Um, and the, the thing with BJ, I mean, I, it, yeah, I mean, I, I obviously I'm not going to question a hitter as great as Chipper Jones and his assessment, but you know, it seems that, that BJ has a lot more issues than just his vision. Um, well, for sure. <laughs> There's no doubt. Did you see the video? I think Dave O'Brien posted some video from spring training of his swing. And he has obviously quieted it down a lot. Much less movement. Mu more, much more controlled looking. Yeah, I didn't see the video. I, I did read uh, something that DOB had put up about his swing getting much less complicated. Yeah. And the other thing that, you know, I would have told you during Chipper's final year that within a few years, he was going to be the hitting coach with the Braves or in some way involved with the team. But boy, it doesn't sound like it. And you couple that with the move to Texas. I mean, he's not even going to be in Atlanta anymore. Well, but I'd be curious to see if that honestly is more of an impetus to get back into it. I mean, him still being in a big city in Atlanta and still being so close where he can just go down to the park and he can, you know, pop in and do four innings of commentary for the Braves and all the stuff that he was doing that was so great last year. Um, he's obviously not going to have that access anymore. And not only that, he's not going to have access really to anything. I mean, if he's in South Texas, Southwest Texas, there's nothing in Southwest Texas. So uh, I'm sure he has a massive ranch down there and I'm sure it's great. And I'm sure that he wants to move there, but uh, you know, who knows how itchy he gets being away from everything. Um, and maybe that pushes him quicker back to the fold than if he had stayed in Atlanta and could have that, uh, you know, that, that connection still to the team that was so easily accessible as opposed to what he will have now. Yeah, no, it, it, it's a good point. It really could, but, but I, I don't know. I walked away from that thinking, boy, we may not see him as a hitting coach at any time. Yeah. And, and we might, and not, and uh, you know, I mean, I'm not even a hundred percent convinced that if he coaches that he coaches for the Braves, I don't know that maybe he doesn't want that. Um, Pressure is not the word I'm looking for, but you know what I mean. I just uh, all that history, yeah, behind it. right. Just you know, I mean, just to have to deal with it. So. Well, I'd be pretty unhappy if I see him in an Astros uniform. Yeah, I'll, or I'll tell you Ranger, that. yeah, Ranger or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it was interesting that the conversation about the salaries too, and I forget who it's Schultz or. Or Mark Bradley had an article. I think it was one of them that had an article today that was just kind of an interesting look that. You know, maybe some of this this money that some of these homegrown guys. I mean, you, you we obviously saw McCann walk. Um, not that he hadn't signed an extension back in the day, but that you know the Braves have been spending a lot of money externally, not so much internally. You know, I mean, a lot of their big contracts have been with now with Ugla and with BJ and even Justin Upton, guys that they brought in. So it's, you know, it's like maybe they've turned around and, and are seeing, like, God, we're losing all our ingrown talent. We need to kind of hold on to this and, and keep track of these guys as well, which they did more so seemingly in the past. I mean, so a lot of these guys have kind of come and gone over the recent years. Yeah, I thought I, I read that article too. I think it was it was about like the clubhouse chemistry as well. That sure you head yeah. into this season with Ugla and BJ being your highest paid players, and the homegrown guys are like, what? Yeah, I, I think it's a good point. All right, so Curtis, that is the show. So look, everyone, we will be back on Sunday night to talk about the Kimbrel and Tehran extensions, and and hopefully the Simmons one. 
by the time we get to this weekend. Maybe a, maybe a minor one, too. And a, yeah, that would be great. So please, everyone, make sure you have us in your RSS feeds or subscriptions on iTunes or Stitcher so that you don't miss any of our weekly shows. And as always, check us out at AtlantaBaseballTalk.com for past shows, to check out our blogs, and to post in our comments section. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at ATL Baseball Talk and on Facebook. Thanks again for listening, everyone, and go Braves! Thanks for listening to Atlanta Baseball Talk, your weekly podcast for all things Atlanta Braves. To find new shows, to post in our forum, or to send a comment, please visit us at atlantabaseballtalk.com.